I'm Danger Holm and today we're going to check out my latest custom bike project. Not only is this Scott scale full of cool parts and features, but it's also a tribute to one of my biggest inspirations in life, Lemmy and Motorhead. Before we dig into the tech, let's start with the whole Motorhead thing. I guess that most of you have heard of rock and roll band Motorhead and their lead singer, bassist and frontman Lemmy. They're truly one of rock and roll's greats and especially so Lemmy, who's simply a legend. Unfortunately, Lemmy passed away a few years ago, but his music and spirit lives on and I've been wanting to do this Motorhead bike for a long, long time. So except for being matte black, you'll find the frame full of hints and details. For example, you have the track listing from their debut album on the down tube. You have the classic spade on the head tube. And also, instead of saying scale world cup, it says scale world tour. All in all, I set out to do a paint job and a build that Motorhead fans would truly appreciate. That anyone would think that it would be a cool bike. And perhaps most importantly, also do my tiny little part to make sure that Lemmy lives on. So now, with the rock and roll theme explained and out of the way, let's move on to the tech. The frame is of course a Scott Scale RC World Cup. And this model was released back in 2017 already, so by now it's definitely tried and tested. Still, after all these years, it's a very beautiful and sleek looking frame. I've actually made it a little sleeker yet. First, by removing the chain guide mount down here. And I've also removed and covered the right side cable port, just because I don't use it and it looks better this way. The frame weighs 960 grams, including all the hardware, so just a tad heavier than its SL brother. It's paired with a RockShox SID Ultimate up front with a 35mm chassis. I got hold of this fork in 120mm of travel, but personally I find that a bit too much for this bike. Unfortunately, there were no 100mm air shafts available, so I had to modify the stock one myself. So now it sits at around 104 millimeters of travel. Usually you find a two position cartridge in these forks, open and lockout, but here I'm using the three position version developed for Scott. Personally, I love the middle mode since it firms up the fork, making it much more responsive while still eating up the bumps. It's connected to a custom twin lock remote, which has of course been custom polished as well. The headset is made by Leonardo Racing and it features high quality bearings and an all around good design. One feature that I personally like is that the lower bearing race has a split in it, so it's much easier to remove when you have to, compared to solid ones. But even so, I modified it a little bit just to make these gaps here between the frame and the headset cover even smaller. It simply looks better. Now we're getting to the cockpit and here things get really interesting since there are some stealth controllers and a hidden SRAM blip box. Let's start with the stem, which is a 90mm minus 12 degree in 10cc. It weighs just 89 grams, despite its long length, and it's plenty strong. It's paired to an intent top cap, which is super light, or alternatively, I have this customized Synchros Garmin mount that has been polished to perfectly match. It's paired with an ultralight 720mm wide Schmolke Carbon TLO handlebar. Tilo stands for the lightest one and it weighs just 102 grams. Stefan Schmolke was pretty much the first one to start making carbon handlebars some 30 years ago and they're still to this day handmade in Germany. These Sirbel twister controllers here are used to control the SRAM axis seat post and rear derailleur. Believe it or not, but despite being so small, they're actually super ergonomical and I even prefer them to traditional axis shifters and controllers. They work with small magnets and have a very tactile and distinct feel. And what's great is that they have a bit more travel compared to a standard axis button. So it's more like a blend between a traditional shifter and a button. Speaking of grips, these are some really cool ones, literally called cool grips. They're made by a German company called Freeze Components, made in Germany as well. And the first thing you notice is that they are transparent. So you can get them with various sticky sheets with a first foot on the handlebar and then you slide the grips on just to customize and give your bike a unique look. 
even cooler is that you can actually recycle them. So if you send your used scripts back to Freeze, they will shred them down and make new ones. The brakes are tricks of Piccolo Carbon, which are probably the best cross-country brakes in the world. And I just don't say that, I really mean that they are. Not only are they the lightest on the market, but they're also incredibly powerful. But perhaps the best part is how incredibly smooth and nice the lever throw is. It's just hard to go back to anything else after trying these. The brake discs are Trickstaff Dechle Ultralight, 180 up front and 160 out back. I have titanium bolts for the calipers and Kogel titanium bolts for the brake discs as well. The seat post is a custom polished RockShox Reverb Axis in 125mm drop. On top you'll find a Synchro Stofino RSL saddle and at first glance this might just look like any other saddle out there but it's actually really interesting in its construction. If you look closely you'll see that the saddle rails and the saddle base is actually a single piece of carbon and this is accomplished using a technique called resin transfer molding. So instead of using pre-preg carbon they use dry carbon fibers, put it in the mold inject the resin with super high pressure and then it's cured as a single piece and the outcome is a stronger and lighter saddle shell. The crankset is another product from Leonardo Racing. They are high quality machined aluminum cranks with a dub standard axle and what's really cool is that you can get them in either 3 or 8 volt SRAM chainring interface. So that means you can use a power meter like I do here. Perfect if you for some reason prefer the look or strength of aluminum cranks compared to carbon ones. The chainring is a pizza plate, I mean a 40 tooth garbaruk. As you can see I'm using Shimano XTR pedals but with a little twist. The axles are made from titanium by a small Italian company called Metti. They have a 120 kilo rider weight limit but still manage to shave 50 grams. To squeeze a little extra performance out of the bike it's equipped with a Kogel ceramic bottom bracket. Some people think that ceramic bearings are a little bit overkill on a bike, but really high quality bearings like this are quite durable and really easy to maintain. They're available either with low friction seals, mostly for road or dry weather use, or cross seals like I'm using here. The chain is a SRAM X01 and the cassette is an 1152 from Rotor. I started using these cassettes last year and I've really been loving them. They are lightweight, super smooth shifting and also available in several sizes. One thing to note though is that they are only available with HD free hubs. So that means 11 tooth is the smallest cog but the good thing compared to 9 or 10 is that you get a little better durability and also a little less chain friction. To round off the drivetrain is the SRAM GX Trailer. And now you might think, wait, a GX on such a dream build? But yes, it does make a lot of sense in a way. Because the GX is of course a lot cheaper than the SRAM XX1 top level derailleur. Yet the main difference is just the cage. So instead of getting an expensive XX1, you can get a GX and pair it to one of these super nice Kogel Colossus oversized derailleur cages with ceramic bearings too. The Kogel Colossus with its ceramic bearings and oversized puller wheels is not just for looks. The main thing here is that the oversized puller wheels means slightly less chain friction as the chain goes through the cage. Also to match the motorhead theme it's been custom painted in Cerakote white. Cerakote is a ceramic based paint which is extremely durable making it perfect for an application like this. The wheels have been custom built by r2bike.com which has been my go-to shop for years. Yes, I've spent an absolute fortune there, but who I've now partnered with. Except for carrying a huge selection of standard and exotic parts, they also carry tons of different hubs and rims. So you can either choose from suggested custom wheel combos or do like I did here, tell them to build any wheel you like. I love the classic clean look with silver hubs and spokes. So at the center, you have Newman fade hubs. A solid but quite lightweight option and also with a pretty silent free hub mechanism. The tires are Pirelli XC RC in 2.4 width and they are set up tubeless using Synchros tubeless sealant. The matching silver valves come from Damoff. And as a final detail there is the Synchros Taylor Cage 1.0 carbon bottle cage. Because although I don't think Lemmy would care much for sports drinks, I do need some from time to time. 
And that's a wrap for the Motorhead inspired and Lemmy Tribute Scott Scale. I hope you liked getting a closer look at the bike and seeing all the details. Let me know what you think in the comments and if you have any questions I'll do my best to answer them there. Thanks for watching and keep an eye out for more bike check videos. <music>